Happy birthday, James Randi. This is August the 7th, 2023. And I am just really missing my friend, James Randi. And I wanted to continue with my look at books. Books, imagine that, books, things that have paper that move and you look at the pages and nothing moves. <laughs> these, these old things that some people have not been doing anymore or <laughs> hold on to. Doesn't seem to be a lot of book lovers out there, but I still love, adore books holding them in your hand, feeling them, you know, playing with the pages, <laughs> looking at the illustrations, um, seeing the seeing them on my bookshelf, all of that, the smell of new books, going through bookstores and looking at books and and just the just I just adore books. Okay. So maybe there's not a lot of book lovers out there, but I do have this book um review section here on my channel psychics explained if you like books and you're interested in books about the paranormal or uh, books pertaining to mediumship or critical thinking make sure you subscribe because and hit the little button so every time i upload a video you'll get a notification but i'm going to be talking about james randy's um, flim flam book this is a very famous book that james randy wrote i believe it was published in 1982 and it is, yep, by Prometheus Books, one of the places he had a lot of his books published, which was associated with the Center for Inquiry, claims of the paranormal uh, group for a very long time. It's called Flim Flam, Psychics, ESP, Unicorns, and Other Delusions. So let's just take a quick look at this, because obviously I'd rather you just read it yourself. It's probably on Kindle these days, or or, or you could probably get a copy of this at Amazon or wherever um, has um, anywhere you can buy books these days. You might even find it at a library. Imagine that, libraries with library cards and all that. Anyway, the first thing I want to point out is that this has an introduction by Isaac Asimov. Now, I don't know if you know who Isaac Asimov is, but you should know who Isaac Asimov is. He was a prolific writer um, a man who was also a fellow at the Center for Inquiry for uh, the claims of the paranormal. I can't even say it right today. Isaac Asimov and James Randi and myself are all fellows of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry. That's where we have something in common. I never met Isaac Asimov. I would have loved to have met him and Carl Sagan, but I never did meet them. But that, I came into this many years after he'd already died. But I did know James Randi, and I knew him very well. And here he is autographing my book. What a beautiful signature. I love it. Anyway, so I consider this book required reading. When people say that they're interested in the paranormal, they're interested in getting started. Where do I start with this? I always say go to Flim Flam. That's one of my many choices be, uh, that people should go to. You know, Carl Sagan's um, Demon Haunted, Haunted World is another prerequisite that I think is really important, plus others. But if you're starting out and you're interested in the paranormal and you're interested in why people believe the things they do, Flim Flam is a great start. It's, it is from the 80s. It is dated. But Randy makes it very readable. He's he's a, a good writer. He has humor in his writing. And he has some nice illustrations and things in here as well. And it's a good generic um, look at, at the world of the pseudoscience. Here he is showing um, psychic surgery, uh, something that Randy did and showed up. There's diagrams and there's photographs. And again, this is from the 80s. So these are little little much but he covers all kinds of stuff just things that he had been in, in, associated with over his long history even in the 80s his long history in the world of pseudoscience the cottingly fairies ufos free energy um chariots ancient astronauts i mean would you believe this stuff is still around today it is still happening I, I just can hardly believe. Now, I get discouraged at times. 
I've been doing this for about 20 years and it's discouraging to have this pseudoscience stuff out there still out there oh my gosh it's like um we have a new channel tiktok okay this is a new new place where people go to and they get information of course it's there's a lot of places like that but tiktok seems to have um and i'm on there so you know let me let me just say this without it being like a derogatory term is that TikTok feels like it's it's full of people who have never heard any of this stuff before and that they get onto TikTok and say, oh my gosh, look, there's this people who are doing psychic surgery and look, ancient a a aliens. And it's as if history didn't exist before they <laughs> found out. It's like, oh, wow, look, this guy's driving around a car and he's talking to the dead. <laughs> They don't realize there is a whole history before them of people who have um, researched this. It's, oh, it, TikTok just seems to introduce people to a, this world as if it's, anyway, you know where I'm going with this. YouTube's done the same thing. Facebook's done the same things, but TikTok's a new kid on the block. So for that's just how it feels about it. It's important to know our history. Isaac Asimov in the introduction of his book says, and I'm not going to read it to you, but here's, I'll, I'll sum it up for you. What he's talking about is that he was on a show. This is Isaac Asimov. And Isaac Asimov was, was the person, the reporter on the show was talking about perpetual motion machines. I kid you not. And then saying to Isaac Asimov, you know, something about it. And Asimov says, Hey, that that's not real. There is no perpetual motion machines that give you free energy. And the reporter's like, well, what's the harm in that? And Asimov is like, dude. Well, I doubt he said dude. But he says, he says, you really don't see what the harm in this is? He says, the world has now been plunged into an energy crisis. The availability of energy is going down year by year and the price is going up year by year. And the underpinnings of civilization are growing weaker as a result year by year. If civilization is to survive, humanity is going to have to make hard decisions and take strenuous action and as soon as possible. We cannot continue to waste energy. We must develop alternate sources. We dare not continue to be heedless of the problem. And then a newsman comes on and tells tens of millions of people that perpetual motion machines and free energy is a thing. And then we're supposed to just try to tell people, no, no, we have to really invest in these other things. Just forget about that perpetual motion free energy stuff. You, you're a reporter. You've just told a bunch of people. They believe you. Anyway, it was really, really a nice introduction he says it's sad but anyway this book talks about a lot of things it has an index in the back um it talks about some of the other books that i i i will be mentioning on my on my channel like psychic mafia I'm doing book reviews he's got an index lots of photographs like i said put up or shut up a chapter on put up or shut up <laughs> um all kinds all kinds of really interesting things so i would recommend not waiting for James Randi's birthday, August the 7th, but I would recommend picking up some books by James Randi and giving them a read, um, looking through them, looking at the pictures and the captions on them, if anything, you know, if, if nothing else, read a chapter or two and enjoy this man and the wonderful things he did for us and the community and I was trying to say also that, you know, at times, as I said, it gets very frustrating that this stuff just keeps coming up. This paranormal crap is just always out there. And it just like a, 10 years goes by and you don't hear anything about it. And then here it comes on TikTok or whatever the new new site is. And everybody's like, oh, my gosh. And then it fades out after 10 years or so. Then it back again. It's like every generation. And I was telling Barry Carr, my friend at the Center for Inquiry, and he says, that, um, you know, we have to keep perpetually making new videos and, and explain things because every generation needs a debunking. It needs something to explain this kind of thing. 
And um, Richard Saunders has also told me that exact same thing. Barry Carr, when I tell him, I say, you know, it's frustrating because it doesn't seem like we're making any difference in this world. And he says, imagine what the world would be like if nobody did any kind of explanations of this and it was allowed to just to be rampant. He says, you have to have, um, you have to continue doing this kind of debunking or explaining things away or pre-bunking because the alternative is and just you can't even imagine what it would be like if nobody was explaining this kind of stuff even if you only convince a few people so that's my recommendation today get flim flam give it a read give it a look through and enjoy and if you like my video please subscribe i really would appreciate it and share you know, what the heck i might say something that would be interesting to somebody stranger things have happened